coach, uh, last time you coached here, you finished 11 and 1. What does it feel, or how does this team feel different to that team? You know, we're in a much better place now than we were when I was here before. Uh, we've got better players, we've got better facilities, uh, we've got a tougher conference, but at the same time, we have a conference where if you can win the conference, you got a chance to win the national championship and get in the playoffs. So none of that was in place when I was here before. So uh, the indoor area is a phenomenal facility. We're working on some other things. Recruiting's going so well right now. So I really feel like we're far ahead of where we were when I was here before. And secondly, we're planning on winning next year. I mean, we've told the guys it's not fair to the seniors to come in here and uh, I, I know more than I did last time I was here, and I'm more mature than I was last time I was here, and, and um, we want to win, and we want to win in the opener, so that's just part of who we are. Mac, you've been actively promoting the, the spring game of late. Why is that important for your program? It's important, to, uh, promoting the spring game is important to send the, the players a message that our fans are really into this and they're excited about next fall. We, we had uh, some great crowds last year, but we had a lot of noon games and crowds weren't very good. And uh, we need a big crowd at the spring game uh, simply to send the message to recruits uh, and to our, our players that it's, it's uh, going to be really important to play well in the fall. Um, and I want our fans to get excited about coming back out for football. We need Kenan Stadium full. Do you have a vision for what that event can become down the road? I do. We, uh, we ended up with 50,000 fans at Texas. and. And that's what I'd like to see here. I'd like to see it full. I'd like to see it a fun day, a huge recruiting uh, day for us, and something that people start marking their calendars for. Where uh, we'll get it, where we'll have a full game there. We're, we're uh, uh, we'll have a, a good game this time, but we won't be able to have a full complement of kicking and punting and all that because we're not deep enough. Uh, but in the future, I'd like to see that be a really competitive game for us and a lot of fun. Texas is not UNC when it comes to attendance for a spring game. I mean, that's a challenge to get 50,000. You recognize that's a, a, a pretty tall task to get a lot of fans out to a spring game? Yes, I, I do, and I understand it, and I don't care. Um, it's what I want. It's, it's something that we're asking fans to do, and um, we may have to win a few more games to get them out, but we're, we're going to... Uh, we're going to constantly talk to our fans. When I was at Tulane, I, I talked to a sports psychologist that said that your team is only as committed as your coaches, your administration, and your fans. So our fans want us to be really good in football again, so you need to show that by buying season tickets and showing up uh, every time we have a football event, show up. And, and that's the message, but it takes, it takes us all. The old it takes a village is true in football as well. And there were times where we didn't have good crowds at Texas. Uh, there were times that it was inconsistent, so uh, it's a, it, it's really a chore anywhere now because there's so many games on TV. Uh, but we, we need our we need our fans' help. A couple of the guys said they feel like they've made some progress with getting more comfortable with the scheme and making fewer mistakes. Is that what you guys have seen in the last year? Yes, the, uh, they are getting better. I, I like what we're doing on both sides of the ball. I think it really fits who we are right now and what we need. Um, the, the offense is a quarterback's dream. I mean, they're changing plays on the field. Um, they're going run or pass on the field. So if I'm a quarterback, it's, it's great. Uh, plus, it's simple but looks complicated. Uh, Coach Bateman's got so many ways to, to blitz without having to play man all the time. He can bring people from different areas. And, and we are learning a lot more about it. Still too many penalties. Uh, still not forcing enough turnovers with our defense. Offense, we've taken care of the ball pretty well, and that's, that's uh, as a head coach, that's a nightmare either way because that means your defense isn't forcing turnovers. So, uh, kicking game's been inconsistent. We, we missed too many field goals the last two scrimmages, and we also have been inconsistent with our punting. So, uh, uh, kicking game's got to get better, got to have fewer penalties. Uh, I, I didn't think uh, that uh, we scrimmaged 70 plays Saturday. I didn't, I, I know that they weren't all full speed. Uh, so we need full out effort out of everybody and we don't have a lot of depth in some positions so guys have to learn that they've just got to go full speed and we're not going to uh, accept anything less. We've had a few weeks to see Michael Carter in person. What do you like about him? It's his range of skills but not that he can uh, Michael Carter is really good. Uh, he's smart, he's tough, he's competitive, he's a coach's kid. Uh, he's really fast, he's got good hands, uh, he's running better behind his pads up inside, but he's got great speed outside. 
and, and he's a guy that every time he touches the ball, he has a chance to score. What we've got to do is we've got to challenge him to keep doing better in the weight room because he's been hurt some. And, and smaller bodied backs can get hurt. We need to keep him healthy and keep him on the field. I'm also very impressed with Antonio Williams. He works so hard, he's so competitive, and if we get everybody on our team to work as hard as Antonio Williams and Tamon Fox, we'll be in good shape. What stands out from each quarterback? Uh, is there any separation there? And just what do you like about each one in particular? So it's been about two or three weeks now. Yeah, I told the quarterbacks yesterday that uh, if we were at Texas and we were looking at recruits, we'd recruit all three of them. They're all three very good. Um, and we also told them there would be no pressure in the spring to see who would start because it's unfair to ask those guys until they learn the offense as, as much as they have to learn to start competing uh, every minute for the job. And I say, that's good. You're up today. You're down. So instead of that, we said, go learn the offense. And, and then we're going to start deciding who needs to be playing more in the fall. And I told them that yesterday. I just said, we're proud of all three of you. You're all three great. You're all three the same age, which is very difficult. Uh, and a lot of times now, quarterbacks are transferring when they're not getting to play. Uh, we're going to figure out who's going to give us the best chance to win. That's who's going to play. We're going to have to have at least two of you to play. We'd like for all three of you to stay, uh, but that'll be determined later. Just learn the offense and show us what you got. All of them are, are good players. Uh, and that's just what we've got to figure out, like um, the pieces of the offense now and the pieces of the defense, as our coaches have been through 10 practices, can start coming together. How do you get the ball to Michael Carter? How do you get him in space? What do you do with your offense to, to make it work? Which quarterback can throw it the best? Which throws better on the run? Who's the drop back guy? Who's the runner uh, that can do more quarterback draws? So. Uh, one of the fun things about coaching is you start looking at putting guys in positions. It's It's been a good move for us for Corey Bell to go to receiver instead of corner. And that's fun for us because we helped our team, we helped a young man. He's happier and he's getting to play more. And at the same time, what do you do? Um, which guys blitz the best? Who do you, who do you put? Uh, Dominic Ross is a really good blitzer. Are we going to put him at defensive end some, not just linebacker, in second and third and long because uh, those edge rushers now are so critical to, to get into the quarterback with college football the way it is. You talked about it a little bit here. Uh, what is that on the field that you're most excited to see, you know, come to the spring game uh, next weekend? The, uh, uh, the biggest thing that, that I will be looking forward to at the spring game is how the guys respond uh, to people around them and, and, and uh, just for the first time for people to see the new era, the new team, uh, and see who steps up. And, and that'll be the important part. It was even different. We've been in the indoor so much because the game practice field or game field was not ready to, to practice on. So we scrimmaged in the stadium Saturday for the first time. That was a little bit different. And you got these uh, six high school seniors that are here basically as early enrollees. How will they respond to people being in the stands for the first time? How will they respond to a, a game day routine? Because we'll actually go through a full game day routine. and and have the pregame meal and, and have the pregame stretch and all those things. So uh, sometimes people just respond a little bit differently when uh, we say the lights come on. Coach, your recruiting class is uh, ranked number nine, the 2010. What are you most excited about? Recruiting is going really well. The, the guys that are committed to us, we really like, uh, but we've got a lot of interest from some tremendous players, especially in North Carolina and some out of state. Uh, but but this could be a great recruiting year, not a good recruiting year, and it's fun. It's fun to, to get people here and get them interested. And, uh, you are the University of North Carolina, the, the state university. Um, we have a tremendous place. Uh, this facility is as good as any in the country, and they know we're going to win because that's, that's what we've been used to. I really like our staff. Our staff's a fun staff. They're, they're a really good recruiting staff, and uh, if we get somebody on our campus, we got a chance to get them. Going back to the spring game, would you support maybe a change that would allow schools like yours to scrimmage another school, maybe a, an FCS type school, and have it in sort of a controlled scrimmage like they do in high school during, during early August? Would you support something like that? Yeah, I would love that. I think it would be great to have some buildup for the spring game uh, where you're playing somebody you don't know because they get tired of hitting each other. And, uh, spring practice is kind of like preseason practice in that you compete against each other every day. And, and that's that's a tough thing. Plus, you get so you know every play if you're on defense, and you get so you know 
uh, every defensive call and uh, and then especially you move a Corey Bell over, he hears a defensive call, he says, hey, here's what they're doing. Uh, so, so that makes it tougher too. But I'd, I'd, I'd love that. I think it would be easier for coaches to learn more about their team. Yeah, it would be. And you, and you would have to control it. And you, you could uh, control, you wouldn't want to have a game plan and study for it, but you could play base defense and offense in a game like that and know a lot more about your team. Mac, uh, Ed Montalus redshirted last year, so we haven't gotten a chance to see him. What have been your initial impressions of how he's played? Ed's really strong. Uh, he is uh, he is playing really well for us. Uh, he's not consistent yet. I just asked him. I said, "How do you think you did today?" And he said, "Not very good." Uh, so, but but uh, uh, he really tries. He's smart. Um, when he knows what to do and he's excited about it, he can do it really well. So. Um, we're, we're, he's one of the biggest surprises we've had for spring, and, and uh, it'll be interesting to see him today because he didn't think he did very well and see, see how he did. Is there an update on which offensive linemen and defensive linemen are, are switching back and forth? I think I saw Corian Johnson today mm -hmm. with the defensive, defensive line, and Avery Jones is, is with the offensive yeah. line. Right now, Q will stay on defense, right. and Avery will stay on offense. Is William Barnes got any work anywhere? I mean, you mentioned no. him. No, he okay. is just playing offensive guard. Um, but, and we don't see any other changes right now with those those two. They'll, they'll stay where they are. And you mentioned Dom Ross potentially playing some at defensive end. I'm curious, is there much crossover, if any, between that outside linebacker and rush end positions? Yes. And in fact, with what we're doing, uh, the outside linebacker becomes a rush end and a four-man right. front. So uh, it's a, a huge crossover. So you wouldn't even have to teach him a lot more. But... Uh, it's something that you, uh, whether you're bringing him from inside, whether you're bringing him from outside off the line, or whether you're bringing him from the line of scrimmage, uh, Dominic and uh, Tamon Ross are our two best pass rushers. So we got to get the best players on the field, and, and we've got to make sure we put them in positions where they can uh, uh, be used the best, where we can utilize their talents.